Hey there, fabulous ladies. Welcome to Bring Back Your Pink, where we celebrate the fabulousness of midlife and beyond. I am Jen B, your host, your biggest fangirl and impact-driven entrepreneur living my biggest and boldest life, so you can too. Get ready to leave behind societal expectations and embrace a life filled with laughter, joy, and endless possibilities. So stand tall, turn up the volume, and let's dive into the world of living life in full color. Together, we'll rediscover the power of being unapologetically ourselves, and we will release our inner vibrancy, and together, we will bring back our pink. Let's make every moment count, girls. Hello, ladies, and welcome to Bring Back Your Pink. I am so excited today because I have the fabulous Joe from Why Not Sissy here with me today. I possess about eight dresses of Joes and I love them to bits. They are the most comfortable, wonderful dresses and they make me feel amazing. But Joe started out really quite in a, an interesting way. She started making dresses for close friends and that soon spread like wildfire leading to creations for extended circles and tons of friends. Um, and every dress bearing the Why Not Sissy label, that is a testament to Joe's artistic vision, each piece diligently curated from inception to completion. So right back in the beginning, Joe's arsenal consisted of just a single talented seamstress, but now Joe collaborates closely with a whole ensemble of seamstresses from Indonesia. And I might want to, to say this, to Joe, these aren't just colleagues. These are cherished family, these ladies. And we will talk about that a little bit later on in the in the um, episode. So steering the Why Not Sissy ship is, for most part, a solo endeavor for Joe. So from engaging with customers to ensuring delightful packaging and dabbling in the digital realm, it's all her. She typifies the solopreneur. And I am so happy that you are here today, Joe. Thank you so much for coming on Bring Back Your Pink. No, thanks, Jen, for having me. So hope I don't embarrass myself, but who knows? You will not embarrass yourself. You will not embarrass yourself. I love these recordings, these episodes, to be just like a chat. And I'm so happy to have you on there because you know I love your dresses and yeah. they make me feel amazing. Um, and they're honestly some of the most comfortable dresses that I have the privilege to wear. And I think I've told you this, you know, when I went to Hawaii earlier this year, you know, I wore one of your dresses and I got off that plane after 11 hours feeling fantastic, not overheating, very important for us menopausal ladies. We need fabrics that breathe and feeling cool, calm and collected. So, you know, yeah, I, I'm i excited to share your journey with yeah. the listeners and hopefully they can discover how amazing your dresses are too. Um, but let's start from the beginning. Okay. Now, when we were just chatting um before you said you started why not sissy seven years ago yep. um, as your children were heading into high school or in high school so yep. what ignited the spark in you to start creating the dresses and did you ever anticipate it would grow into you know the why not sissy today well I started because I know this sounds really wanky and I don't mean it like that so I used to always wear flowy loose fitting dresses and people would go oh where did I get that dress from and then one day I thought everyone asked me where I got my dress from I'm going to start up a label so we started up why not sissy now it started purely to sell with friends like my first um thing we did in the backyard of a friend's house do you know what I mean that's how small it was and then we sold out and I went oh shit okay so then I thought oh this people want more. I started making five dresses maximum mm -hmm. because I didn't, I'm from the country. I'm from a small country town um, where it was very, very important that you didn't have the same dress as everyone else. And I didn't want it to be, you know, you're going to a 40th. My kids were at school. I didn't want to turn up at the playground and I've got the dress on the same as, you know, three other mums. I just didn't want that look because, you know, like, it makes you embarrassed and then everyone goes, oh, did you see her over there? She looks better than you. And I just didn't want that. So I wanted to do it in a small batch. So that was probably where my concept was. But I also wanted to do it as a free size. Which because, is great. Because we get so consumed and I find it so frustrating about 
the size on the garment. Do you know what I mean? And so I've been all different sizes in my life. I've been a six to eight. I've been a 10 to 12, you know, 14 to 16. Like I wanted to just really not get consumed up in that label. Plus I wanted to be able to share it with a friend or share it with my sister and, you know, like if you don't want something, give it to someone else, you know, and then they go, oh, what size is that? Oh, that's a size 12. Oh, it won't fit me. I didn't want that because as it is being a woman, we get bashed up so much about everything else. I just didn't want us to be consumed with with a free size, but I did not realise how much stigma is around about being a free size. Like people go, oh, no, I don't fit into a free size. I'm too skinny. Well, just try the dress on. And I use all my girlfriends. I'm so blessed. I've got beautiful, beautiful girlfriends. So the girls that model on my page Mm -hmm. all said, oh, I'll model, I'll model. Mm -hmm. Now, Helen, which was my first lady, like she was is so busy that she runs her own business. They've got concreting. She'd be out at the beach. I'd be taking a photo um, and we would be taking photos all around Central Coast. And she's a size 10. Mm-hmm. But we made the dresses work and then I would never be in the photos because I wasn't confident enough to be in the photos. Mm-hmm. Um, so I found then Belinda volunteered and Jane volunteered and then Deb volunteered and Catherine and they're all different sizes. So I wanted everyone to see that's a one dress on and that fits on everyone's bodies. Now, even when I do a pop-up shop or I did a market, my sister will come and help me. Now, she's a size maybe six to eight. Mm -hmm. It's hilarious. Her and I will always wear the same dress, Mm -hmm. always. And people will go, oh, can I get that dress? So I'll pull out the dress and they go, no, 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 no. I want the dress that she's got on. I go, that is the dress that she's got on. But people can't wrap their head around it until they get to know the dresses. And now, like, they love them. Do you know what I mean? And. I think it's really important that we don't get consumed about what the size is and what the fit is. Like make the dress work for you, add a belt or, you know, boss the sleeve around or, you know, just don't look at that dress and go, oh, that's not going to fit me. So like my first couple of dresses that I made, you know, I don't make them anymore because as you grow, um, People get inspiration from your dresses is the best way to explain it, and they get inspiration from your print. So what happens is um, I've been, you know, got bigger, changed the designs, and I've learned what works for different body shapes. Yep. And, and I've got to know my body shape as well. I'm very, very pear, so I've mm-hmm. got a big bum um, mm-hmm. and not so big on the top. So I do things with a drawstring. I yes. do things with, you know, that you can adjust the dress. And and that's just me experimenting even more and more. Like I've got a new style coming out at the moment, but we take probably five samples to get that dress. Mm. So it's not like we'd make the dress and it's there. Like it's the girls will make it, we cut it, it comes back. I get the girls to try it on, Not the sleeve's not right, the length's not right. This And it, like it's... It's a process. And I think before I probably jumped the gun too soon and just went, oh, no, that'll do. And now I don't do that. Does that make sense? I just more concentrating that it fits everyone. I always say, you know, like, I mean, you know, I'm a branding coach in my other business. You know, I always say to the ladies I work in, the business is forever evolving because as you go along, you find things that, may not work as well. So you cut them out and you find, you know, new things that do work. It's like, it's like everything. It's like, you know, it's like, it's like us and our mindset and all of the things like we just go along and things evolve, Um, you know, and I mean, you've been now in business for seven years, which is amazing. So yeah. you would have evolved a lot. And, and just change. Like, I mean, like when I first started out, I was doing markets and I just, and so naive, so naive because I just thought, oh, yeah, you just ring them up and you'll get into a market. It's not like that. It's, no. it's 
No, it's very hard. It's very mm. cutthroat. It's like being back at school mm -hmm. with the kids. Um, how many followers do you have on Instagram? Oh, I've got a hundred. Well, come back to me when you've got ten thousand. Wow, really? Oh, and that was a big market in our area, and I really wanted to do it. So my friend said to me, "Look, you can come and do my stand. I can't do it." She was sick, and she had a cushion homewares business. Yeah. Amber, her name was, and I said, "Okay." I literally took five dresses, but because it wasn't from any wholesaler that you buy at Surrey Hills in Sydney, mm. I sold out literally in 15 minutes. So I rang my husband. I said to him, you need to bring more dresses. And he went, oh, my God, how many dresses did you take? I said, I took five, and they sold out. And he went, oh, my God, oh, my God, we have to get your mother more dresses. And so he drove them. It was only 20 minutes away. Okay. But he drove them and he bought all these bags. And what happened was I sold out completely. And I went, oh, my God, this is crazy. Like I was so excited and, you know, I started to think, what are we going to do for the next market? But then I wasn't allowed back into the next market because, number one, it was Amber Store. Number two, I didn't have enough followers. Number three, it wasn't from a wholesaler. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't the mainstream stuff. But funny ah. enough, that market still goes now and it's a, you know, tourist destination. But I learned uh, very, like, very early on, like, it's not as easy. And market stores are expensive. People go, oh, they're they cheap. Are. They yeah. are expensive. I used to do markets. So yeah. I, I they, they can be expensive. And if, if you're not selling... You're in trouble, and especially especially for the people that have the lower price products as well. I mean, you've got to sell a lot of stuff. I know, actually. and you're up early. I'm telling you now. You're right, because 3 a.m., I mean, how did you even do that? I mean, in winter, oh, my gosh, I'm not a morning person. Like, I am not a morning person. I never pretend to be. So the thought of getting up at 3 a.m. makes me feel quite ill, but you well, do it constantly. We used, to pack, we used to pack the car the night before. I do remember once. I had a big night on the drink on the Friday night <laughs> and I had to get up to oh, Shelley Beach. Oh. Now, this market, it, it's, it's only 30, 40 minutes away. And I was driving and I seen the breathalyzer and I thought, oh, shit, what's going to happen? So he called me in. When was your last drink? 11 o'clock last night. <laughs> I, I could still smell the alcohol on me. Yeah. And I thought to myself, oh, my God, imagine if I go for DUI. Number one, I'll go through all the market. She's gone for DUI. Number two, I have to ring my husband to come and get my car. Uh -huh. Number three, I'm going to be embarrassing to everyone. So I, I told him I'm just going in the market. And he said, because I think I, I registered a little bit, but not enough to be over. He said, just go <laughs> to the market, having a bacon and egg roll. I said, oh, mate, I can't wait for a bacon and egg roll. But that was probably one of the things I learned. Number one, don't drink the night before. No. Number um, be careful if you do, like, do you know what I mean? Just silly stuff like that. Like I thought I was young. I'm not young. Like putting up a tent, it's blowing. A oh, gun. Yes. Like the winds are crazy, especially up at Warner's Bay. The winds are crazy. I remember doing a Christmas market at Rouse Hill in that shopping centre. Oh, yeah, I did one of those as well. Oh, my God. And it was a bad Christmas. It was a bad storm hit us and took all the tents. Mm -hmm. I remember a video, which wouldn't be a very good site. Imagine then, because I don't think Snapchat was out then it's seven years mm -hmm. ago. My dress was actually over my head and I'm trying <laughs> to get the car. I think far out, why do I do it? So I don't do markets now. I haven't really done them. I stopped doing markets probably last year, to be honest. Mm -hmm. They're very uh, exhausting. And I do actually have a very funny story about a market down um in the Southern Highlands, and we were driving down there, Google Maps sent us down this dirt road. There'd been really torrential rain. I came around a corner. I was in, we were in two separate cars. I came around a corner. I'm like, what the heck? What are you doing? My husband's like cut in half. What's he done? He's kind of coming back. He literally driven my car into like a flooded road, but because it was brown, you couldn't oh, see it. And he, he, My car was written off. The mark, all the market stock was trashed. I mean, he was fine, um, but he said, thank God. But, you know, it was like, yeah. I don't think I did another market again, to be honest. I think I was so traumatised by it. It was like, never, 
again, it was awful. Um, so traumatic. So markets, yes, I understand why you don't do markets anymore because oh. they're just they are a lot of hard work and yeah, Stop it's it. tough. It, and your dresses get damaged sometimes because it's where and I put them what like I call them houses because all the dresses go into like a clothing bag. So I put I call them little houses. So I, I protect everything. Like, do you know what I mean? And I just yes. tags if it's raining. I just think, no, nah, it's just not worth it. I kind of think too now that you have grown to a certain to a level that you know people are buying online, um, so you don't need to be doing. Oh, but market. I actually well, like it. Can be fun, you know. Yeah. But still, like, and you did have a market family, you know, that you became very close to. Very, very, cl- and still close even now. That's so nice. Um, like, but I still do a pop up shop, and you know, like, I like doing that because. What's really you get to meet the people? You get to meet your people, and you, and you get to talk to your customers, yes. and you get and they go, oh yeah, I like that dress, but I didn't like it this or you know, and and like if you don't get to talk to them, yeah. I, I mean, I'm pretty well hands on. Well, I'm OCD anyway, so I am hands on. So if you message me, it's me that you speak to. Yeah, if you email, it's me. Like it's I don't have staff. I have Kate that does my emails. Hmm. on a Friday night because I cannot work Clavio. Hmm. I cheat and I do not get on. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I hear you there. I hear you I, there. I'm hopeless. Like when I first started this business, I had no, I knew how to, I had Facebook personally. Yeah. But I had no idea how to use Instagram. I had no idea how to email. More like I had to have a lesson how to email off my husband. Oh my like, he was like, I mean, that's how she, not silly, but challenged I am with all that sort of stuff. Yeah, but you built your website from scratch. No, I had friends that helped me with that. Um, and it was and it was probably very, very basic, but it got me through. And then my second website, I saved up. I remember it cost me fifteen hundred dollars to do the next one. Mm. And I saved and um I thought, oh my God, that's so much money. But Lauren did it and she made it fancy. Now I just drop, I've got, you know, Kate drops the pictures in and drops them out mm. for me. But that's still, like, that's a big deal, you know. You you were there. Like, and, I mean, we were just talking before and I said, you know, what is your, like, what did you do previous to this? You're like, well, I was a mum, you know, and I was a PA yeah. and I've done floristry. But, you know, like, this is a big deal. You're jumping into business. You're building a website from scratch, like that that sells stuff. You know, it's not like it's just a couple of pages. It's like a e-commerce website. You know, like you've taken on this stuff, which I think is just amazing, and and run with it. You know, like a lot of people would not do this. And you know, you were what forty three at the time. Yeah, probably roughly around that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you know what's um funny about? It? I remember ringing the guy from Shopify, the the help desk, when I was doing the first one. And he said, look, it won't take long. We're on the phone for two and a half hours. We were on the phone that long. He said to me, do you mind if I go and get a drink of water? And I said, do you mind? <laughs> I always say, even when I speak to the people from Facebook or anything, I said, imagine a 90-year-old that's never seen the computer and then you've got me. That's me because I'm so me. talented. Mm-hmm. And, and me. And, and, like, I'm trying to master TikTok and I spoke to a girl last week, last Monday actually. I rang her up, so confident. I rang her up and I said, look, um, I understand you can help with TikTok. I'm just trying to work out what to do because I do think it's very important that you get to know the platforms and I do think it's very important that you know the back of the house stuff. As before, yeah. I never did that. Yeah. Um, I've had I've paid people to do that and I've wasted thousands and thousands of dollars mm. like ridiculous without realizing that you've wasted so much money mm. but the girl was so cocky she, I reckon she's about 23 24 just by her tone she goes to me no I don't think TikTok's the platform for you or your business and I went right and I thought okay but now that's given me a bit of a B in my bonnet now I think well no actually I'm going to try and master it like wow. It's a red rag to a bull for this old duck because, you know, nobody can tell me I can't do anything, that I'm too old because, you know me, I'm like, you're never too old, it's never too late. Somebody tell me that. I, I think I 
I think I would have probably hung up on her. <laughs> oh, I'm so well, thanks very much for your time. That's okay. And but then when I go, she sends me an email going, uh, for the oh, what was it? it's a a thousand dollars just to even join her thing. And I'm thinking, but well, I'm too old, but you want me to join your Facebook group or whatever your group you've got, and it's a thousand dollars. I think it doesn't make sense to me, but anyway, too uh, old. Moving never on. too old. I've never got a master old. TikTok. You watch it. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll be waiting and watching. So, Joe, was there a specific moment or instance when you realised that, like, why not sissy was actually had been transformed from a hobby into like a legit viable business? No, I still don't know. You still don't know. I still um. Like when I do my tax stuff, which I really, really hate the paperwork side of things. I look, I hate it. I don't, the GST and, you know, I do that. I send it all off. I look at it and think, oh, I've done that. I I don't ever take anything for granted. I don't really, I've turned off the cha-ching off my phone. I turned that off a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I think mentally that was probably the best thing I ever did. Mm-hmm. Because let's be honest, there's going to be, I mean, some big labels and that they will get sales every day. Um, I may not get a sale every day, but that's yeah. okay. Well, but, I think, but but sometimes I think you watch other people's stories or, you know, and get caught up and then you go, oh, something's not right with my business. Something's not right with my product because I didn't get a sale today. So mentally I woke up one morning and went, you know what, I'm turning that off. And I did it and I feel better for it. I always say, and this is something I say to my ladies that I'm teaching as well for branding, is like, remember, social media is a highlight reel. Yeah. It's the highlight of, you know, what's going on in other businesses. Not in mine. Like I have phone drops and I have all sorts of things going on mine. Mine's mine's very much how I am and I always talk about how forgetful I am. But a lot of them are highlight reels. You know, so I think personally for your mindset, I think that was a great decision for you to do it because there are so many out there and you would see so many other businesses doing this and that. And then that's when you always start to second guess yourself. So well done you. Or or they'll go on and go, oh, you know, postage is expensive. Yeah, postage is expensive because you're doing an online store. Or, you know, I have to do the after pay sale. No, you don't have to do the after. Sale. No, no one says to you, you've got to do that after pay sale. I don't choose to do the after pay sale. No. Yes, after pay takes a big chunk of your percentage. They mm. are ruthless, but it's a good program. And I'm happy to use that program for my customers because, you know, I've signed on for it. So don't whinge about it. If you're going to whinge about that sort of, and I find that frustrating for the bigger businesses out there because their markups are so much bigger than my markups. Mm. I pay for the screen. So her colour, I think it costs $75 to $85 per for one colour. Mm. So if a dress has five colours, mm. that's that's just your screen. That's not your fabric, then all that sort of stuff. So I think sometimes that's why I don't think I've made it, do you know what I mean? Because I don't probably get too wound up in the big worries that the others rant go on about. Do you know what I mean? Like the. Making uh, it is different to each person, isn't it? You know what I mean? Like the whole I've made it, you know, to one person that might mean they're making a million dollars to another person that might mean changing one person's life. You know what I mean? Like there's differences in making it. and, And that's probably right. I get more excited when I see a repeat customer. Like mm-hmm. I've got a lady that's about to, she hasn't purchased, um, but she's about, her next purchase is her 100th sale. Whoa. And she has been with me since word go. See, that's that. And that, see, Thank that you. that will float my boat or whatever you want to say or make me so excited more than anything because I think, you know you've done something right when you get that repeat customer and then they buy two, oh, like, you know, seven. You know, like when yep. you get, and you can see how many people have bought something. Like mm-hmm. I wrapped an order today for a lady today and she's on a 50th order. 
And I and, and that warms my heart. Like yeah. I get more excited about that. Or there's a lady, her name's Nicole. She I I packed I packed the wrong dress. A hundred percent I packed the wrong dress. Mm. I was having a blonde moment. She ordered the Ashley in the olive stripe. I sent her the Ashley um in the Amazon. Mm -hmm. She emailed me and she said to me, You've sent me the wrong dress. I went, shit, sorry. I'll send you out the right one, put a reply postage in. She's just sent me an email just before I got on. Her cousin's taking that dress. Not not because, you know, she's been forced to, because mm. she loves the dress. It's a yeah. free size. She can fit into it and yeah. she feels great. So I think to myself, like, that's more exciting to me than, you know, you know, I've had a $20,000 day, so to speak. Yeah, same. That'll I never, mean. That'll never yeah. happen, but, you know. Well, you never know. Never say never. But I, I agree. Like we all have our own definitions of making it, and I that actually leads me to what I the next question I want to talk to you about um, is about your ethical production. You know, it seems very vital and central to your brand. And I know, um, as I said in the um, intro, you have a team over in Indonesia. Um, now, you they're not just your employees you know you have helped empower them to run their own ethical businesses and support their families so how does that make you feel see for me you're making it that's making it well you know Lila and Kutut um you know like they are like family you know and we just don't like I remember like we've bought them chickens we've bought them cows we've bought them you know stuff like that and I remember um I took Faith over and we went to their house and I remember the chicken walking through. Um, mm. It's called Kevin. And I said, <laughs> Kevin I said the to chicken her, and I have Kevin the cat. <laughs> <laughs> I said to her, uh, are you going to eat that? And she went, no, Miss Jo, do you eat Milo, which is my dog? And I went, I'm not going to eat Milo. And she goes, oh, I'm not going to eat Kevin. It's a pet. And I thought, oh, okay, you bought it. That, that was so exciting. And then yeah. And then, um, because they live in little villages, so um, yeah. and I don't mean that disrespectful. They're very, it's very beautiful when you go there because they mm. all come to see you. We've paid for the kids to go to school. We give them pencils and things. I yeah, think it's very brilliant. much, very much, um, that they work for me, but I'm very respectful that they have a life and treat them well. And you know, like I. Like they are, they message me on a Sunday. They mess. They know the kids' birthdays. They send mm. the presents over for the kids, and you know, like I think it's very, very important because without those girls, I don't have a business. One hundred percent. And the impact that you've made on their lives is just incredible. Like you've changed their lives, and they and they know that, and they will say that because, like, you know, if they have no work, they can't afford, you know, to help their family, and especially right. in COVID. Oh COVID yes, was hard because um, like Lilla's dad's a driver and her mum is the housekeeping for hotels. Mm -hmm. So the money that she was making, because I, you know, was still kept them employed through COVID. Mm. So she was sort of like, you know, thank you, thank you, and they sent me the most beautiful, beautifulest card. And I thought, how I, you don't realize how something simple, like they help their whole village, not yeah. just their mum and dad, because they could afford it. Yeah. You know, and I think we forget, like, you know, like the big chains, you know, they just cancel an order. So it doesn't matter. Like, oh, we've changed our mind, but we don't want that. Yeah. Well, I don't do that because once I start that process from, so what happens is I have a graphic designer, mm -hmm. which is little cousin, cousin. So she does the graphic designer. And then her other cousin, she um she prints the fabrics mm -hmm. so like, it's, it's very much the a family business ran over there all like they they look after their cousins or we've got a you know cousin that can do this you know and i think that's good i feel like they look after me because i treat them well and they treat me well so it goes both ways you know, this is a little, um, one of my little personal religion things is, you know, treat people how you like to be treated yourself. Yeah. It's, it's just a really simple, simple, you know, way to do things, but it works so well. Um, and speaking of family, your family seems to play a pivotal role, you know, in the business and your journey. Can you share a funny moment, a memorable moment, something that's stuck in your brain, um, you know, about your family and your business? 
Well, I'm lucky because my husband will pack the car. My daughter will help me, you know, write the cards. But um, I do remember when I first started, I was doing markets and my son went to an all boys Catholic school. He's 13, maybe 14 at the time in English, you know, boys love English. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and his teacher, Miss Cook, and she's still a customer to this day, has got a dress on. And she had bought it off me at the markets. And he, she says to Liam, oh, do you like my dress? And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of your mum's dresses. And so the guy, the boys in the class go, oh, you're one of your mum's dresses, you know, like and <laughs> to him it's embarrassing um, to think, number one, his mum's selling dresses. And number two is, for heaven for sake, you know, his teacher's got it on. <laughs> and she brings it up in class. Oh, oh, yeah. It was just, and like, you know, this is a footy kid that goes out in the, you know, playground and plays footy with his mates and his mother's selling dresses. So, oh, that's it, hysterical. Oh, uh, it was hysterical. So he came home and I said to him, How was your day, mate? I had the worst day. Miss Cook embarrassed me. What happened? She had one of your dresses on. I said, What well, did you tell her? She looked nice. No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was, oh, oh, my God. But I do remember that. I just think it's just, you know, I'm doing markets as a mum and, you know, because all the other mums, they seem to be professionals, you know, like there's a doctor, there's yeah. the solicitor or there's a PA and what does your mum do? And and see now even I remember, oh, I do remember this. It was hilarious. So I did a reel. It's when reels were first getting. Oh, reels. Yeah. And. I seen this trending song. Now, number one, I never listened to the words, right? And it was a really <laughs> trending song. So mm. I did this reel. Mind you, it, it had a lot of views. It had like 10,000 views. And I'm spinning around, but my son comes home and Faith comes up and then you've lost the plot, Mum. Do you know how embarrassing you are on this song? You need to take this reel down. Do you know where those words are? And I went, mate. I grew up in the 80s where we're giving a lot more meaning to songs. I've just realised what, you know, half of the music means now, you know, like remember Little Jagged Pill? Oh, yes. Yeah, yes, still they like, you know, sitting in the car, back seat, you know. Mm -hmm. We're like you're singing along to these songs, not realising the words. I said, don't worry. And I said, I'm not taking it down. I said, because it's going off. Yeah, I know it's going off. All <laughs> but... my friends are looking at it. <laughs> I, have, I have done stuff where I think, okay, have I taken it too far? Have I embarrassed everyone? Because my husband has a very um, reserved job is the best way to say. Mm -hmm. Like we go to things and I get lectured on the way, okay, just, you know, talk about normal stuff, don't talk, you know, like just just little things like that. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes his mates or his work people will be there going, oh, my God. Like, for example, here's, a, here's an example. We live next door to Airbnb, right? Mm. And the gardener that comes, he's not bad looking. And in summer he does mow the lawn with no shirt on. Mm. So I did put it up on my Instagram. Everyone needs a gardener mm. like this, right? Yes, we do. I know. But then what happened was my boss my husband's boss's wife seen it and said oh my god we need to get this gardener but then what happens is tony comes home and he goes did you have to share that like why i'm in a meeting and you're telling like i'm getting messages going what's your wife sharing a um gardener i go well that's what happens you know yeah, sometimes that's, that's 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 one being authentic to who you are yeah it's real life you know like i would do the same no, i totally like, don't have a gardener like that or what's next that's next door's garden. I'm my husband on the lawn. I'm telling you now, I get out there going, oh, Milo, you want to go to the toilet? <laughs> I was going to say, I don't have anybody in my my street that has a, has a gardener like that. I wish I did. I wish I did. But I, so this was a question I had sorted, like what was being the most unexpected challenge you faced in running Why Not Sissy and how did you overcome it? But I feel like I already may know what, like partially what it is, and that's when we were chatting earlier about you being trolled and some of the nasty, nasty messages you get in your DMs. And I find that, one, fairly disgraceful um, that, that other women would be doing such things. But, two, you know, 
how do you overcome this? The trolling, well, it's, look, some days I just laugh it off. Mm. Um, I think, oh, you know, that's that's on your um, thing. Some days it does hurt because I'm yes. just being, and, you know, like if they send me like a, you know, the, the pig gift, oh. um, you know, or, you know, who do you think you are? You think you're good looking. No, I don't think I'm good looking. I don't think, but I think we're, all women are gorgeous. All well, women we are. are. Everyone is beautiful in their own way. And I do find sometimes when I look at that, I think, okay, what's happening in their life? I try to think, flip it, what's happening in their life. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I was get, first getting child, I would screenshot it or I would respond or, you know, like, you know, like there's a lady that wrote one um, yesterday, oh, you look like a bag of shit. Um, Because I, I was sitting on a bench. I, I jumped up on, which was hilarious because I bruised my ass. I <laughs> wanted to take this photo because I thought it would be cute and I jumped up on a table with a photo and I pressed the, I'd had 10 seconds in the timer. So I literally jumped up, squatted down and took it. And I actually said, you know, the caption was, you know, trying to take a photo, hope the table didn't collapse. And some lady wrote, well, lucky the table didn't collapse because you are a fat heap. Like, do you know what I mean? Oh. Stuff like what? that. So when I look at that, I think, okay, and, and it is. It is seems to be the same age group, the same mm-hmm. thing. And I think maybe they're not comfortable in their skin, or what it is. But I never know what's been in their jur- what their journey's been through. And honestly, truly, they don't know what my journey's been through too. Mm-hmm. Like, do you know what I mean? We're we're all different sizes. We are. Our life, like our whole life, we we our weight fluctuates. Unless you're really like. I've got a girlfriend that she could eat McDonald's every day and KFC and her weight would just stay the same. I oh, see, you know, you know me, I've always, like, I've always been bigger, you know, like yeah. I've got shoulders like a truck driver, you know, like. Yeah. And that's the thing, like my weight has gone from like a size 10 up to like a size 24, back down to an 18, you know, like it, it, it's, it, we're putting constant pressure on ourselves. And I mean, truly you don't, I, I just don't understand why, how people think it's okay to even write this. Like but to I, send something to someone like that, it's disgraceful. But I think sometimes I, well, I block it out. It's the same as like with my husband's work. I do travel with him because he goes to dinners and mm-hmm. that stuff like that. So we stay in a hotel and I do share like I'm out or whatever, whatever's happening. Oh, I know. I love seeing it. I'm like, are you at the Sofitel right now? <laughs> People think you've got this fancy life and you think, no, if you only knew, like I'm going to a dinner where I won't sit next to my husband I'll sit opposite at him and I have to make small talk to people about people I don't know um which is fine because I'm supporting my husband and I don't mind doing it but people think oh you're in another hotel again oh my god like how much money are you making no I'm not making money I'm doing it for my husband and I think people sometimes don't understand there's two sides of my life there's the why not sissy wife life which I do a hundred percent. Like I love it. I wouldn't change it for a moment. And but then, but then sometimes I have to put on my wife duties. Do you know what I mean? Like you have to support your well, husband. Yes, we all have to do it. I get my butt dragged into meetings with my husband, and yeah. you know, because he likes me to come and chat about design and branding. You know, to impress his clients. Like we all, are, we all do it. And then that's what I mean. So people just naturally, and then you get trolled for different things, and you think. What the hell? What? Why? Why? I see. I live the thing. If I seen someone like that, I I don't say it. If you and I'm not going to be everyone's cup of tea. A hundred percent. I just sure as heck someone shot a vodka. I had to get my favorite little quote in there. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? And if I didn't like a picture, swipe up. Just keep. Well, that's easy. Don't write something nasty. That's but- it. I I've just come to the conclusion that they have very sad, empty lives. Like I think I've I've told you about the time I was trolled when um. I, I don't know, there was some photo and it was like, instead of bringing back your pink, you should be bringing down your BMI. I'm like, yeah. really? Is that all you've got to say? Is that all you can think about? I never pretend to be skinny. I'm very vocal about being plus size. You know, it's like, what, what? I don't see what I don't understand is where they get off tearing people down. That's just not normal, you know? So I, I, I struggle with that. But I'm glad that you 
you know, you you rise above them. Um, not not always. Tough. Not always. Oh, it's not, tough. Not, yeah, not always. But I try. I think that person is never going to be my friend. I'm never going to no. see them. I'm not their cup of tea. That's their issue. Like, do you know what I mean? You try to, but some days, you know, you think, oh, okay. oh if you get, if they get you on a vulnerable day. Yeah. I was very glad I found that trolling when I was on a bus heading to Port Douglas to go to a business retreat with a bunch of amazing women, and I laughed. That's um, right, and that's what happens. But yeah, had he got me on a day where I wasn't feeling quite so pleased with myself, <laughs> I get it so I if I was having a bad hair day, um, it might be a different suit. <laughs> exactly. And that also leads me to another question. I love the way that all this is just leading into each other. Um, you know, you truly do emphasise the importance of women feeling beautiful and good within themselves. You know, what sort of message or sentiment do you hope that each woman feels when they wear one of your dresses? I know how I feel. I always feel amazing. You know, I feel beautiful. I feel comfortable, um, you know, and comfortable. Like for me, as a 55-year-old woman, comfort is really important. And to be able to look good and feel comfortable, winning at life. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I want. I, I know people say it all the time and it seems to be, you know, the saying, but I do. I really, and I, and I have the philosophy, I'm happy to take your money, but I'm also happy to refund you. Mm. And if people write me a letter or like an email and say, look, hi, I, I didn't love the dress on me, I my response is send it back. If you don't love it, it's not for you. You're not yeah. going to wear it. And I would rather people feel amazing as soon as they put that dress on because I'm telling you now, people know as soon as they've put a dress on. It's, they do. Yep. In 10 seconds, you know whether you're loving it. And if you've got to fiddle and you've got to go, oh, I've got to lose weight or I've got to do this or I've got to do that, that dress is not for you. Mm. And that's been my philosophy from the word go. And I know a lot of big brands, they don't refund. They give you a credit note. Mm. I don't agree with that because I think you're hoping that that credit note, you're going to forget about it. Because nine times out of 10, you'll forget about a credit note. Yeah. I've got some really, really lovely ladies and they are going to buy something. They'll go, Joe, don't want a refund. I want a credit note. Mm. I will do the credit note. I'm happy to do the credit note. But if you want a refund, I'm happy to give you the refund. For the sake, for the sake, I want you to love that dress. I want you to feel amazing as soon as you put it on because I work really hard on the dresses for, for the fit, for the mm. fabric, the fit feel soft I hate ironing so I want the dresses that you don't have to iron <laughs> yeah, but do you know what I mean because and I tell people the body heat will you know take the creases out you don't have to worry about it being shrunk when you wash it because I've already done that I've pre-shrunk exactly. the fabrics for you it'll stay the same like and and that's what's really important about the dresses that you buy because they're in, they're not cheap like they're not a $20 or $30 dress like so I want you to be wearing it and I want you to wear it over and over and over and, and enjoy it. And that's the good thing about our weight changing because mm -hmm. so this year you might be a 12. Christmas hits, you might go up to 14. Do you know what I mean? In a normal yes. standard shop. But you don't have to worry about that so much, so so to speak, is because it's a free size. So it's going mm. to fit you on your weight journey or your weight loss or whatever journey you're on, and that's what was really important for me as well because, you know, like I've got a mother and daughter that share dresses. Mm. They both feel gorgeous. Like one mm. will put a belt around it and one won't. And mm. I think that makes, makes if you feel good in yourself, you know, when you have a good hair day, yep. you put some lipstick on and you've got a good dress on, you have a spring in your step, and that's mm. what I want everyone to have. Mm. Because if you don't feel good about yourself, you're going to have a crappy day, number one. And around every around you, everyone else is going to have a crappy day. Yep. Do you know what I mean? And that's what I think is really important. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I know how I feel when I wear them. Um, I love the fact, actually, I was just laughing when you're talking about going upsize. Like at Christmas, they're so perfect. You know, my I have Christmas dresses that I, I bought from you last year. Um, also, holiday is so perfect because, one, they roll up real small and they're great to take away. But two, yeah. you know, when you're happily eating um, your way around a country or whatever, you know, they're perfect for that. Um, so lastly, as we're nearing the end of this episode, 
Your journey has been filled with so much growth and learning. If you could just offer some advice to your younger self at the beginning, you know, just starting out with Why Not Sissy, what would that be? I think my advice would be to know what you're buying. And Mm -hmm. the fact is I left myself in a very vulnerable um, spot. Um, Like, number one, like you you pay for influencers. Like influencers Mm -hmm. are expensive. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't probably realise that. Um, Computers, like know what's Facebook mark, um, Facebook ads, all that sort of stuff. I don't didn't know that. So I was paying people to do that. I paid influencers. Um probably get yourself around a really good supportive team. Like I have done a lot of um you know social works with different people. Like I'm like, you know, you get in these groups, like, you know, like the standard groups, the bitches or drinking wine or whatever it's called, hmm. they, they're they not there to help you. Um, it's a good group to when you're starting, but, like, find out who are your people, who's your tribe yep. that, that can help you. Um, I probably didn't do that. Like, I, I remember I paid a lady $1,500. Or it might have been $1,800. Um, Angie, her name was. And she was going, because I didn't know how to do pixel to do my pixels for Facebook, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You needed pixels to get you Facebook. So I paid her. She was going to do it all. And she disappeared with my $1,800. Oh, yes. Do you know what I mean? So just people like that. that I sure you choose my, people you trust. Yeah. Well, also, too, that other that you know other people can yeah. do. Um, And also, too, social media. Like, there's so many... I don't. Re- I don't think people realize how lucky they are now. Like there's, like when I first started out, there was no Tracy Harris's. There was no Sheco. There was none of those. Um, yeah. That collaborate eight. There was none of those networking, which um, now there is. So like, if my younger youth, my younger person could come through, and they know those channels, yeah, the story would be completely different because I have wasted money. You know, I've made bad decisions you know I've made you do. but it costs you money and oh, when yeah. you when you're on your own like I've got dresses down there that I look at and I think I love them but no one else loved them mm. like, so you've got these big dresses or you use a um, big influencer and she says you've got to have nine to ten designs for me that's a lot yes and, and you've got to have quantities of 50 but out of that they only might buy two of them. So mm. then you've got to try and get so so two designs are sold out, but then you've got eight others of yeah. quantities of 50. So yeah. now I think, well, actually, I don't think I can afford to do that. Mm. Like it's big money. It's and I don't have accounts. I have to pay for everything up front. Mm-hmm. I have to pay for it to get over here. Like, do you know what I mean? Like that. Just to know what you're capable of doing and where you should put your money and where you shouldn't put your money. Yeah. Probably what you need to know is maybe even, you know, just trust your gut. If you think that's too much, I do trust my gut, but sometimes I get caught up in that roundabout thinking, oh my God, yeah. that someone's going, that worked for someone. Well, I should do that. But it, but it doesn't work for me. So you got to sort of stay in your own lane, and that's what I've always wanted to do: is stay in my own lane. It's okay to make the lane wider, but don't go out of your lane. I think that's great advice, and I think it's you know perfect for any anyone that's listening, that's you know starting up a new business or thinking of starting a business or whatever. Re- yeah, remember, stay in your own lane. Be you know you know what I'm going to say. Be who you are meant to be in the first place, and don't let outside influences you know, get in your head um, because, you know, they do, don't they? They really do. 100%. And you, and you see social media and, and you go and you look and you think, oh, my God, they've done 100 sales today and you haven't. And you think, well, what's wrong with your product? Oh, maybe I should do that. I should, I should, maybe I should do blue and white spots. So that, but that you can't do that. And that's probably the older I'm getting now, I think, okay, just trust your instincts. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? 
and I am very lucky because I have a good community base. Like I've I've started, mm. I've got a VIP page on Facebook. They're honest. The ladies are honest. Yeah. They're kind. You've got to be kind in there. Like, do you know what I mean? Like one of the ladies messaged me and goes, oh, can we do this with a dress? Well, I did that and it didn't work. But, you know, there's other brands that are doing it. And I, I'm happy to share the, the, I always say to everyone, there's a cake and I just want a bit of the crumbs. I don't want even a whole slice of the cake mm. because I think there's enough for us to all go around. And I always say, you know, there's enough sunshine for everyone. A hundred percent. But I think some people don't want it. They want the whole cake. Yeah. And and it's, I don't want that. And that's probably what I, I've learned as the younger one. I was, I, I was sort of thinking, oh, I want the lot. I want the lot. But no, I don't want the lot because I still want to stay where I am now. Like I've been gra- glad to grow a little bit, but I don't want to put staff on, not because I don't want staff. It's because I worry that I'll get too big and I'll lose not being in touch with my customers. And I love my customers. Mm. And it's funny, like, I mean, you and I met at the show. Yeah. Walking through And you were exactly what I thought you were going to be like. Do you know what I mean? Because, and I think that's really important that you stay true to yourself. Don't be, what do they say, Um, you know, one's for Instagram and social media and then the other person's different. I never want to be like that. I think that's very important that you stay organic to yourself. 100%. And I think that's another fabulous piece of advice, as a matter of fact, you know, for those that are listening. Um. Thank you so much, Joe, for coming on. It's been it's been a pleasure chatting all things why not, sissy, because you know I'm a big fan of your your dresses. So, thank um, you. so yeah, thank you so much for coming on. And to all of our ladies that are out there listening, remember, do not choose to or well, not to choose. Don't let your pink pink. Oh my gosh! Now you'd think that I had a drink and I haven't even had a drink, girls. <laughs> Stay pink. I think that's about as good as it's going to get. I need another coffee, I think. (laughs) I think you do too after that. I I do. Go me. Anyway, girls, thank you for listening and I will see you on the next episode of Bring Back Your Pink. Hey, ladies, I created this podcast because I know we need more of it to help us bring back our pink and live our best lives. But guess what? We can't do this alone. So if you loved this episode, let's spread the world. Share it on your socials, send it to a friend, and don't forget to write us a review. By doing this, you become part of the movement to bring back your pink and inspire others to do the same. I'm incredibly grateful to have you in my world as we live life in full color and become our authentic selves. Together, we're unstoppable. Let's keep rocking and bringing back the pink.